Every year, Better Cell London Zoo hosts an annual weigh-in to check on the health of their animals. We've been invited down today to see what happens behind the scenes. So join us as we go away some animals. I'm here at Penguin Beach with Jess, and today we're weighing some Humboldt penguins. So why is it so important to weigh these animals? So we actually try to weigh them more than just our annual weigh-in this time. We try to weigh them uh, a few times a month, but today is super, super important because actually all the animals here at the zoo are going to be getting weighed. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that information onto a, a zoological database that can be shared with other colleagues and other collections around the world so we can actually gain a sort of very vital information. We can compare the weights of our Humboldt penguins with other collections and to ensure that our, all of ours here are really, really healthy and that we know that we're doing the right thing for them. And do their weights naturally fluctuate at certain times? They do, yeah. So um, we've actually got some chicks in here as well at the minute. So of course they're going to be slightly uh, lower in weight than some of our adult breeding males. But also every single year a penguin goes through something called a catastrophic molt, which is basically where they lose all of their feathers. Now in order to do that, they need to gain lots and lots of weight. So what they have to do is we have to feed them lots and lots of fish and they sort of balloon up. And that way when we do weigh them, they could, the breeding male could easily weigh up to maybe six kilos. And then after their molt and they've gained their new feathers, they can go back down to about four and a half kilos. So it does fluctuate quite a lot. So what we try to do is we try to weigh our penguins after the molt to get a more accurate weight of actually how healthy they are compared to them just being a little bit chubbier just going through the molt. <laughs> and you mentioned chicks. So every now and then there will be females with eggs. How often does that happen? So that will happen every single year. And what will happen is the colony tries to do everything all together at the same time. So between... At March to so about June, we will have um, we will have our females sitting on the eggs, but also the penguins uh, do co-parenting, so they'll take it in turns to swap with the males as well. And we'll have those eggs there for a few months, and then we'll start seeing our little chicks starting to hatch and venture out onto the beach. And we had 11 chicks this year that have hatched, and they're now in the pool with the rest of the colony, and they're doing really, really well. And actually, it's their first annual weigh-in debut, so they're, we managed to weigh a few of them. They're doing okay. <laughs> Big day. And what sort of stats are you expecting for baby penguins? They, they can weigh, when they sort of hatch, they'll be about 100 grams. They're actually quite tiny. For the chicks this year, we've been doing lots of training with them. So we've been training them to go onto the scales. They then get a reinforcer for going on the scales. It's a lot easier than us having to pick them up and we put them on there. <laughs> so it's a big day today, weighing lots of animals. And we're going to go see what else we can find. We're here with Glyn, the lead primate keeper at ZSL London Zoo, in the middle of the sp squirrel monkey enclosure. How many have you got today to weigh? So we've got 12, 12 animals to weigh today. And what's the secret to weighing a squirrel monkey? Uh, the right food, high value food. So today they're getting a variety of nuts and popcorn to get them on the scale. Popcorn, yeah. <laughs> amazing. And how much are you expecting these squirrel monkeys to weigh? Hopefully it's all it, all relative. So obviously anyone that's younger, hopefully they're putting on the right amount of weight. Anyone that's a little bit older, hopefully they're sustaining weight. So by weighing them like this, it means that we can just keep a better track of what's really going on with them. And, and identify any problems or any health exactly conditions. Exactly that, because they're often covered in lovely dense fur and we can't always necessarily see if they're a little bit sort of thinner or emaciated. So this just means that we're keeping track of everything. We can give them the best health care they need. They can give them supplementation if they need that as well. And any uh, naughty behaviours or anything that you're expecting from these guys today? Um, they will probably be pretty good. If they see they've got the nuts, they know they sort of know what we want them to do. What We, we, we spend a lot of time sort of sort of introducing these behaviours to get them used to it because we want them to be in the best condition they can be. Absolutely. And by them working with us uh, and us spending a little bit of time, we can get them on the scales, we can get all the weights we need. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. I'm here with Amy in front of the Sumatran Tiger enclosure. Amy, how difficult is it to weigh and measure for quite large Sumatran tigers. So generally with these guys, they're actually, um, we work with them in a really specific way. We train them um, onto a specific uh, scales, way board. So these guys, it's actually quite easy um, in terms of they are well trained. Um, generally, you do have to teach that behavior and getting them to stand up against the ruler has mixed results. It's incredibly important. We want to keep a really close weight on our animals just across the zoo as well. 
um, throughout the year, um, especially the cubs at the moment because they're still in that um, really quick growing stage. So we want to keep a really close eye on them to make sure they're happy and healthy. And it's a really good way of keeping an eye on an animal's overall health if there is a quick drop in weight or a change in weight or if a female is potentially pregnant. And what are we expecting these guys to weigh, especially Asim, the big male? Uh, well, um, Asim at the moment weighs about 115 kilos <laughs> uh, and they are the smallest subspecies of tiger. And so that gives you a key idea of how big the big ones can be. Um, so the cubs, um, their most recent weight, which was very, very recent indeed, was 75 kilos. So they are fastly, rapidly approaching that size as well. And Geisha is about 95 kilos. Amazing. <laughs> this is Angela Ryan, the keeper of zookeepers here at London ZSL. So what is it you're going to do with this data once you've weighed all the animals? All our data goes into something that we call ZIMS, Zoological Information Management System. It's a big database that we put lots of information in. All the keepers will be adding information to this database every single day. So you can imagine how much is in there. But weights are really important because we can then share them with other zoos, not just here in the UK, across Europe as well, um, and also worldwide. We could all see each other's information. So I know what my tiger weighs compared to maybe one over in San Diego or something like that. And we can make sure that they're all healthy weights and share that information. We can also compare that to, to wild data. I was going to ask, can this information also help the conservation of wild animals then as well? Absolutely. So if you imagine something like a tiger, um, they're actually quite hard to spot. They're quite hard to, you know, keep an eye on in the wild and you're certainly not going to be getting weights very easily. But we can do things like look at paw prints, see the size of the paw print. Is that, what? how old do we think or what weight do we think that animal is compared to the paw print of one I I I here in our zoos? And they can use that data to help kind of manage uh, the wild populations. And you mentioned earlier that you've got a lot of experience weighing the animals yourself. Which are the hardest ones to do? Well, that's a good question. Uh, ones that uh, obviously you think that animals that you can't get close to might be harder. You know, you, you might have seen the penguins, the keepers put a bit of fish on and they jump on. But actually some of the bigger animals are easier than they think because we make it part of their daily routine. So they walk through over a weighing scales every single day, like our big drafts might do that. And then you get that weight every day and they don't even know they're being weighed. So uh, maybe the hardest ones are the groups, the troops. So when you've got a big troop of monkeys and you want to get one and you've got to separate them all out and they all want to be on there to get their reward for being weighed, they're probably the, the hardest. It sounds chaotic, but a lot of fun. Yeah. So we've had a brilliant morning seeing what goes on behind the scenes at ZSL London Zoo's annual weigh-in. We've seen tigers, gorillas, meerkats and penguins and that's just the beginning. They've still got a lot more species to weigh throughout the week.